Hello everyone, my name is Tom and today I am going to be showing you how to program a on-delay timer using the Studio 5000 Logix Designer software. As you can see, I've already started programming my rungs. Now in rung 0 is where I'm going to place two on-delay timers with two inputs to control the timers. I'm going to get started here and first thing I want to do is add a normally closed contact. Then I'm going to add two on delay timers. Then I'm going to add a branch. And we'll pull it all the way across and place my timers here. So that's my first branch here and I'm going to place a normally open contact so now that I have everything that I need in my ladder logic I am going to start assigning some tag names and the first tag that I'm going to assign is going to be to this top timer here so I click on the area where it says timer and then I right click that opens up a little window here and I'm going to highlight new tag and then click. Now I'm going to assign this tag as timer A. And I'm going to leave everything else the way it is here and then click create. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the bottom timer here. I'm going to highlight it, right click, new tag and I'm going to call this timer B and then click create next what I need to do is give these timers a preset value so I'm going to come up here to the top timer timer A and click the preset area now these timers are in milliseconds so if I want a timer for 10 seconds I have to type in 10 then add three zeros behind it and that will give me my 10 seconds and then click enter and do the same thing for timer B type in 10,000 gives me 10 seconds click enter and I'm done now that I'm done assigning a name and a preset to each timer what I want to do is bring focus down to the outputs, but let me zoom out here a little bit. One more. As you can see, I've already assigned the outputs. We've gone over that in another video, so I don't see any need to do that. So next, I want to start assigning all my inputs. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the tag name for timer A and drag it down here and also here, here, and here. Then I'm going to take the tag name for timer B and drag it up here. Now using the drag and drop method was an easy way to get all my tags in place. So now I need to come back and make a modification to them. So what I'm going to do is come up here and highlight timer B and double click and that opens up this little arrow for a drop down box and in this drop down box if I scroll all the way down it has timer B highlighted and there's a plus mark there so I'll click on it to expand it and I have a choice of bits here for this particular input which is an enable time timing or done bit I'm going to select the done bit And I'm also going to do the same thing for timer A contact here. Let's use the arrow to drop down the box. Timer A is highlighted. I'm going to click on the plus mark to expand. And I'm going to use the done bit here also. Now if you watch on the left, all my errors will disappear once I click in the field here. So that rung is finished. There should be no errors. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue down with the inputs that control the outputs now. 
I'll come here, double click on timer A, use the drop down box, and timer A is highlighted. Click on the plus to expand. This one I'm going to use as an enable to let you know when the timer is enabled, when it is actually have power to it. So I'm going to double click. And my enable bit is set. Next one I'm come down, do the same thing. Use the arrow, click the plus mark to expand. This one's going to be a time timing bit. And come down here, do the same thing again. This time I'm going to use a done bit. Okay, doesn't look like we have any more errors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to download and go online with it. Now that we're online, we can see how the timer actually functions. In this program, I've programmed it so that anytime the processor enters run mode, timer A will begin to time. Once the accumulated time here is equal to or greater than the preset, it will trigger the done bit for timer B and it will begin to accumulate time until it meets its preset. And once the preset is met here, it will trigger the done bit here, which will reset this timer back to zero and resets the done bit here, which resets this timer. Now I'm going to move over here to my bits for timer A in rungs 1, 2, and 3. In rung 1, I have the enable bit. Anytime timer A is true, the enable bit will be true. So the output will also be true. Now I'm going to move down to the time timing bit here. The only time the time timing bit is true is when the timer timing. So the accumulated time must be below the actual preset time and the timer must be enabled. Now the timer done bit down here in rung 3 is set anytime the accumulated time is equal to or greater than the preset value of timer A. Well that's about the end of this video. I tried to make it as short as possible. There's just so much more that you can talk about timers. But I showed you how to actually program the timer itself and bits so if you like my video or you learned something, let me know, leave a message, otherwise I'll see you next video.